Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I am doing a first impressions on the brand new Kaleidos collection that is coming out to you guys very soon and it is their escape collection. I know. So if you are interested in seeing my thoughts on this as well as may or may not be a giveaway, I don't know, <laughs> then just keep watching. You guys, I am so excited to do this video. I most definitely wanted to do a whole first impressions of this collection because there's a lot of products. And you guys know I love Kaleidos. I think they are a totally underrated brand. And this, by far, without even putting this stuff on my face, it's their best collection. So I did get it in PR, which I am so eternally grateful for. But I totally would purchase their stuff with my own money. Here's the package that it came in. I am so eternally grateful that they consider me when sending out these PR packages and it comes with a lot and then here are all of the beautiful products displayed. I took the products out. These are just the boxes, but they are doing such a good job, you guys. If you aren't familiar with Kaleidos, they are an indie company. And what I love about them is just how unique they are and how they really follow through with their vision. I think they really have a fresh set of ideas as far as the makeup industry goes. And everything about the brand is just really cool, really well thought out. I love it. I really do. So when I got the email about this collection coming out, I was so excited because they really notched it up this time. They only had eyeshadow palettes of five. Now they have this big, I believe it's 15. You'll see, you'll see, but so excited for it. They're expanding their line. And again, thank you so much Kaleidos for sending this my way. I am so grateful and very excited to try these products out. Now they did, I think they accidentally sent me two PR packages. So I do have a second one. So I will be giving that away. So make sure you stay tuned until the end of the video where I will announce how you can win your very own PR set of this amazingness. Let's just get into it. Unfortunately, I do not have any information as far as pricing goes. This collection is going to release in June. No exact date. Also, I'm going to kind of ballpark where I think the prices would be for each item. But again, as soon as I know, I'll write it in the description box. But we're going to start off with the first thing that came out and it looks like they've come out with some sponges this one is wet this one is not so you have a purple one a lavender one you guys know how much I love my lavender this is the same shape as the real technique sponge and then you have this green one this one's dry so it's a little bit smaller this one I would use more so for contouring baking things like that because it is an interesting shape I can imagine it being kind of hard to actually spread foundation but this is what I would use for powder and things like that so I'm just gonna use the purple one today to apply my foundation foundation. So I'm just going to use a tried and true for me, the Makeup Forever Ultra HD foundation. I wear the shade R330. And let's see how this spreads out. First thing I'm going to do is try and cover my problem side right now. For me, how I like to apply foundation, if you aren't familiar with my channel, I like to spread it out with my finger and then I'll use the sponge to blend it in and push it in. That's what I find works for me the best. So this sponge does feel very, very soft. I don't have a sponge that really feels like this. I can't describe it. <laughs> I don't know, but it just feels a little bit more soft to the touch than the Beauty Blender, but it's a little bit more dense when you squish it. This is a nice sponge. I approve of this. It's spreading the foundation nice and evenly. It's not too hard on my face. I absolutely cannot stand sponges that just feel hard when I'm pushing in the product. So the texture of it's very nice. But again, it's not as like spongy as say a beauty blender, but it's definitely getting the job done. As far as price point on this, I'm going to guess this would be around eight, nine, ten dollars I don't know maybe more maybe less but their brushes are relatively affordable you can get a brush set for twenty dollars or you can buy a brush individually for about eight seven six dollars so I'm gonna guess this might be around eight dollars just kind of playing off of their already existing price point I mean I don't think it's soaking up any more product than a sponge already would I think this is a good sponge okay so at this point I 
am going to finish the rest of my face makeup as far as concealer, powder, eyebrows, bronzer, and then we're gonna go into the eyes. So I'll be right back. So the base is down. We're going to zoom in to the eyes. This of course is the most exciting part. So in this collection, they came out with an eye primer and this is called the Tone Activator Eye Primer. It enhances eyeshadow and pigments, vibrancy and color payoff, makes colors pop, prevents smudging, prevents creasing, and is water resistant. The sky has a six month lifespan. Um, I was looking through their website, honestly, I have no idea how they are going to price this just because they don't have a product like this. So I definitely already can tell I put way too much out on the back of my hand. Uh, it's a very liquidy consistency, so little is going to go a long way. We are getting a little bit of coverage on the eyelid, which I really like. I much prefer primers that have a skin tone finish to them just because it covers a little bit of extra veinage on the eyelids. I did have a little bit of concealer blended up there and I do feel like it is causing that concealer to move a little bit which isn't ideal but suggestion would be not to blend concealer onto the eyelid which is fine because this has some coverage to it and then I like to go in with my sponge and kind of spread everything out. The sponge by the way if it is like five six seven eight dollars totally worth it if it's any Anything more than $10 stick with real techniques I'm gonna give that a second to set down and we're going to get into the eye look so how my eyelids are feeling it dries down it's not really tacky and the coverage is minimal I'm gonna go off camera and do this eye so that way I can get a real feel for the pigments and let you guys know on this eye the best way to apply them so that's why I do this eye first because I feel like my explanation and the advice I can give you is better on the second eye so I'll be right back. Hi, okay, I'm back. The look is done. I love it. I'm gonna show you how to do it on this eye, but really quickly, let's talk about the details of this palette. So this is a 15 shade palette. They do not have a 15 shade palette in their line. They only have five shade palettes and those are $24. I'm gonna say this might be in the ballpark of $40, $50. Again, no idea. I'm going to reapply just a little bit more of that eye primer. All of the shadows did seem to blend very smoothly on on the eyelid. Again, an eye primer is kind of hard to tell first shot. So here are the swatches of the palette. Absolutely beautiful. I can say that these shadows did all swatch with ease. As you can see, the majority of the shadows. I feel like this color story was made for me, if I'm being honest. These are my colors, primarily lavender, but we also have pops of green in here and just some original colors. The color story of this really, really speaks to me on... <sighs> a very deep level so the color story yes swatching so far yes and then also the finishes in here beautiful so you have nine matte shades and then you have six shimmer glitter shades i would say these are between a glitter and a lid topper some shadows are a little bit more lid toppery than others some have more of a pigmented base uh, but i mean take a look for yourself i think the color story is beautiful i love the quality of their textured shadows i've always been in love with their glittery shimmer kind of shades and they did not disappoint here. Let's just get into the application so that I can talk to you guys some more. So I'm gonna start off with a little bit of Loft which is this kind of skin tony beigey kind of shade. Love that they added this in. I think this is a very important shade in a palette and I'm just running this underneath the brow bone. I always like to start here with the shadow look. You do, as you can see, have some neutral options as well. I'm gonna start off with Carnival. I'm using a Kaleidos S1 brush, which is a big fluffy brush. One thing to know about these shadows is they are powdery, so make sure you tap off the brush before you apply it to the eyelid. And I did find that with these shades, they can blend out a little bit more than you would like to the point where the color itself fades a little bit if you over blend but they do build up very well so even after you blend you can apply more but as you can see they still are very vibrant it's just there is such a thing as over blending with these shadows but for the most part everything worked great and I liked that even if you did over blend they built up very easily once again so this is just going on the inner half of my crease and I'm really really 
blending that up into the brow. And now taking a Kaleidos S2 brush, we are going to use Soiree, which is this cute lavender shade with the escape button. And this is going to be our middle kind of crease color. This blending in with that orange kind of turns it pink. Um, very impressed with this lavender shade. A little bit not as pigmented as I would like. This is a harder color to formulate. And as you can see, it's behaving. And that's the important part. It's doing what I want it to do. Again, this is kind of an overarching color, so I am going to put that kind of high. With a Luxie 229, I'm taking Mardi Gras right here. This is just going to deepen, and it almost has a kind of hot pink undertone to it. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a little bit pinky, which I really like. I think it complements the orange very well. This shade can lean a little bit patchy if you are not careful, but take your time, work it out. Very, very good. And then with this kind of fat brush, I'm taking Exoplanet. This is a very, very unique shade. You don't see a shade like this a lot in palettes. So I tapped off the excess and I'm going to press. So this shade can go very wrong very quickly. It's a hard hard color to formulate one of the hardest so you'll find a lot of times these are pressed pigments they're harder to build harder to blend over top of mardi gras it's more purple and then you'll see as you carry it over onto the lid where there isn't much color it's more of that blue which i think is really cute but it doesn't matter really too much how it's looking on the lid i'm just using this shade to add some definition but i love how these colors blend into each other definitely a very cohesive color story if you ask me they just work together with a kaleidos s3 i'm going to start off with flamingo which is the hot pink along my lower lash line and then more towards the inner part of my lower lash line i'm gonna add tango on top to tie this color to down here so i put it on the tip of the brush and i'm going to apply that hot pink all along the lower lash line i will let you guys know if this stains most hot pinks do stain my eyelid. I'm just kind of wiping the brush on the back of my hand and going into Tango, which is that hot orange color. This guy is going to go in to tie Carnival together, that first color that we used in the inner half of the crease. And then for some depth here, I'm going to take a little bit of the darkest purple that we used, kind of blend this out here. And then I'm taking Exoplanet, which is that blue purple periwinkle color right on top. And that's just going to tie the top and the bottom together. But still go in with this pinky orangey brush and kind of blend this out and i bring it low this is a dramatic look you guys obsessed okay so now we're into the fun part i think where kaleidos really kills it is in their shimmer shade they're very glittery if you don't like these kind of glittery topper kind of finishes you won't like this palette but as far as the mattes go i mean i got this look with ease and these are not easy colors so i think they've done a very good job so i'm going to take galactic gala which is this glittery green shade absolutely stunning this is an interesting place for me to put it normally i wouldn't do this i would put like a pinky to purple all over my lid but i did really want to play with this green color and i mean as you can see it is absolutely incredible and i'm just applying that to the inner half of my lid it really contrasts with the orange which i think looks really cool and then we're gonna take some of cosmic cabaret which is the darker glittery purple kind of color and this is going going to go on the outer half of the lid over top of the purple colors and then I'm going to pat to blend these two shades together and then take a brush just kind of blend those glitters out finally I'm just taking a really small pointy kind of brush and I'm taking some of starlight sonata and this is definitely more of a lid topper it's more about the glitter effect that you get on your lid but we're just gonna use this to brighten up I feel like this always brings a look together and put just a little bit here. And so this is the shadow look. I absolutely love it. I think I'm going to go in with a little bit more of that periwinkle blue shade right here. I'm going to do liner and lashes and then I'll be back. We've got a few more products to try. Just a few more. Lashes are on. I'm loving the look. Yeah, if you couldn't tell, kind of really into that palette. Let's move on to the other items in the collection. So they came out with blushes and this is the first time they done blushes so I can't tell you how much I think it's gonna be because these are very different these are called the lo-fi duo blushers so there's two shades in the collection first of all take a look at the packaging like this is why I love Kaleidos just so cute so on theme 
theme, very original. So the first one that we have here is, this is Lo-Fi Peach. So these do have a mirror, they feel quite weighty, and then you have a blush, and then I don't know if this is like a blush topper or a highlighter, so I'm gonna swatch this one for you. So again, this is Lo-Fi Peach, and this is the darker one. Here is the lighter one, this is Lo-Fi Rose, it has lavender packaging, and really, really soft and pretty. This one is very cool tone. I can see this working with a lot of different looks. One thing though, these definitely are not going to cater to medium or deeper skin tones. I don't really see these working for you. So I would love to see them expand the range. I'm gonna do one on one side, one on the other side, and then I wanna blend them together because I want this look to look good. I wanna wear it around a little bit around my house. Um, so we're gonna start off with the peach one on this cheek and I'm just going to put this on. Bottom shade is a matte finish and it's blending out pretty good. I don't think blushes are too difficult to formulate and I'm going to take the Kaleidos H1 which is my current most used highlighter brush. I've been grabbing for this like crazy. I'm going to take the top shade which is this peachy pinky kind of duochrome. Okay yeah for me I can't use this as a highlighter. It's definitely too deep so this needs to be blended on top. It's kind of like a blush topper or a bridge between the blush and the highlight. Yeah, I don't really like this shade on me. I don't really think it's very good for my skin tone. It's just too dark to work as a highlighter, too shiny for an all over blush. But the bottom blush itself, really, really gorgeous. How I would use this is just two taps, but I don't think it has a very good blush topper finish to it. And then let's move on to Rose. I love this one, let me wipe this off really quick. So we're taking the bottom shade, which is Mood. Very pretty, very soft. It does show up on my skin. Even like the way it's swatched, I was a little bit worried, but this gives a very nice natural flush on my cheek. Medium skin tones though, I just don't see this working. And then we're taking the top. This one should actually work as a little bit of a highlight. If these are highlights, they're not as smooth as I would like for them to be. I do think they can kind of emphasize a little bit of texture, not really giving you that glow from within look. Like they're okay. And it just kind of gives a really galactic kind of pink highlighter vibe and then not very flattering <laughs> as a blush topper. So I'm digging for sure the matte shades, the top shades. I need to play around with them a little bit more. I do prefer this as a highlighter, but it doesn't really lift. It just kind of gives a pink finish to it. But these are super cute though. So they also came out with three new highlighters. I have all of their highlighters. I really do enjoy them. So they came out with three new shades and then one shade that's supposed to be reformulated. So the one that's reformulated is Ray Rider. By the way, these are going to be $14 each. That's how much they are on the website. Honestly, I really can't tell too much of a difference between the old one and the new one. I did swatch them side by side. So the new one is going to be on top and then the old one it's going to be on the bottom. I would say the old one is a tad darker and the new one is just a little bit more of a bright pop. And I really like these highlighters. I think they're very good, very smooth, and they have very pretty colors. So that one was Ray Rider reformulated. It's just a little bit brighter than the old one. Other than that, I can't really tell too much of a difference, but they have three new colors. So the first one is Diamond Dasher, and unfortunately, this one came broken for me, which is sad because it's my favorite color, uh, but it's all smashed up. But it has like a very soft golden pink champagne to it. This is probably the most wearable, which is why I'm sad. And then we have Mars Melter. Look how cute this packaging is, like so obsessed. And it's a good quality highlighter. Now, if you're not into like duochrome kind of highlighters, which I'm not the biggest fan of, these colors are a little bit unwearable, but if you're looking for wearable shades, Ray Rider's wearable, and then this new one, Diamond Dasher, is. Mars Melter has a little bit more of a pinky undertone to it. This is actually quite wearable. And then Moon Cruiser, which looks like this. It's blue. This is a blue, kind of purpley duochrome highlighter. Really, really neat. You can really see that duochrome here for this. This is like a cool lid color, inner corner color for my taste. So I have a lot of pink on my cheeks, so I think I'm gonna put on some of Mars Melter just on top and see how it differentiates from the highlighters I used in the blush duos. Yeah. This one definitely has a little bit more pizzazz, applies a little bit more smooth to the skin. 
didn't expect to go so pink with my highlighter. And I'm gonna put just a touch of my broken diamond dasher just right on top to add a little extra beam. I may have to just order myself a new one of this because I really like this really glowy kind of color. Now, Diamond Dasher though, it does have glitter in it. If you don't like a glittery highlight, don't get that one because I can see glitter on my face, but I like it. I'm still in my 20s. I'm gonna wear glitter while I can. So they also came out with a lip gloss. This is a Lucid Lip in the shade Hypnotize. These are going to be $16. That's how much these are on the website. And this is really pretty golden glitter is kind of a more maroonish base. I'm gonna show you it alone. Ooh, kind of hot pink. I do like the formula of their lip products. I think they're really nice and underrated. This is kind of not too much color to it, more of a gloss, kind of, you can see the glitters poking through. So I'm gonna put on a quick lip color, put this back on top, and then I'll show you the final look, and then we'll go over my final thoughts on the products. All right, so here's the final look. Here's what we're working with. As I thought about it, I did a very colorful look, kind of similar to this one with both my Jackie Ina palette and the Jeffree Star, the purple bloodlust. I just love this look. So, <laughs> final thoughts on the products. I think that the sponges are good. This is an interesting shape. If they're worth it or not, it's going to depend on the price. I think between five to $10, you're golden. These are great to kind of pick up as you're ordering other things from the website. I didn't notice it soaking up too much product. I haven't tried this one, but I think it'll be very nice if you like to bake and shape your face with powders. The eye primer, it's very hard to tell right now. I'm not a big eye primer person. I, I don't have oily eyelids or anything, so I'm probably not the best person to learn about this product from. What I will say is it does give you a little bit of color that I like and the shadows blended on top very nice. I don't think it's light enough to really make colors pop a ton. From what I can tell it's fine but again not the best judge of that. The eyeshadow palette called the Escape Pod. I mean couldn't you tell? I really, really enjoy this color story and the quality I think is fantastic. The only thing is the packaging is a little bit chunky. She, she thick, she is thick, but I think just the whole concept and everything, the product itself is really beautiful. This is my favorite palette from them. I genuinely just really enjoy this palette a lot. Very good. I think my tutorial and every explanation in that sense kind of summed it up pretty well. The blushers, color range, they need more for sure. I think the matte blush, they got a good formula for sure. I'm still kind of warming up to these top colors. I just don't find them to be very flattering. I think they kind of emphasize a little bit of texture and they're just not the right tone for me to be able to work because they're kind of dark for highlighters, but they're also kind of too shiny for blush toppers. So I'm gonna have to continue playing with those, but they're so pretty. I just love this duo here and the packaging and all of that. Really pretty. I just need to figure out how to get those top colors to work for me. The highlighters, I didn't cover too much because I, they've been in their line for a while. They're really beautiful. They're a good formula. They're smooth on the skin, easy to apply. And if you like duochrome kind of colors, I think you will like these. For more wearable colors, I would go with Ray Rider or Diamond Dasher, but only if you like glitter on your face, then go for Diamond Dasher. But Diamond Dasher is interesting because it's the most wearable color, but it also has glitter. So it depends what you're into, but you also have a strong pink highlight and then a strong blue highlight. The Lucid Lip on initial application, I really saw the color that was in the tube but it actually blends out to be pretty sheer with just a little bit of that glitter finish. It's a nice formula. It's not sticky at all. Very comfortable on the lips. Definitely moisturizes it. I put it on top of the Another Round lip pencil from Colourpop and it's an overall nice gloss. I don't think it's the standout product in this collection by any means but it's good. I don't have anything bad to say. Overall, I think they definitely had a banger with this collection. They did a really good job. I'm very excited to see Kaleidos grow growing and developing more products and creating bigger collections. Just as a company, you know, the people behind the brand are also really nice. So as a company, I would do nothing but support them. And if you are interested in these products, definitely I give them the thumbs up. So let's get into the giveaway because I do have an extra package and I think one of you guys will really, really love it. It'll be a great time to lift some moods during this time. I'm just gonna do it how 
how I do all of my giveaways. So this giveaway is going to end a week from the day that this is posted. I will put all the details of that in the description box. You must be subscribed to me on YouTube and you have to be following me on Instagram, which is at Morgan Turner Makeup because I contact the winner via direct message on Instagram. So if you don't have the name of your Instagram and you're not following me, then you can't win. And what I want you to comment down below is what has gotten you through quarantine or lifted your mood. And that can be anything from like exercising, doing makeup as your therapy. What activity has gotten you through this quarantine? For me, it has been my YouTube channel for sure. You guys have definitely gotten me through this quarantine. I hope- What about your boyfriend? It's been so amazing to connect with you guys, to be posting more, to be editing more, just creating content for you guys. I have been thriving off of it. So thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to do that. I wanna know what has gotten you guys through this. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you are going to pick anything from this collection up and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys, have a good one.